I did want to say, don't be afraid to reach out, you know, drop a comment if you want to get connected. I'm definitely open to helping out other applicants and whatnot to, to get into the program. Hi everyone, this is Andrew. I'm a Kleiner Perkins Engineering Fellow. Uh, I made this, I'm making this video to share some tips and talk about the application process. First off, I'm guessing most of you know what the fellowship is, but just in case you don't, it's basically, you know, kind of creating the next generation of PayPal Mafia, so to speak. There's an engineering fellowship where you'll be doing mostly software engineering, a product fellowship for product managers, and a design fellowship for like UI UX design people. Part of the fellowship is basically an internship at one of the Kleiner Perkins companies, um, but you know, the fellowship itself is basically the events or the network that you build with the other fellows. Headline of the fellowship is that you get $100,000 in seed funding. I think that this is actually the least important part. Definitely the most important part is the network that you build out of the fellowship. So let's talk about the process to become a Kleiner Perkins Fellow. Um, so every year in late October, early November, you'll get basically, you know, the application where you apply online. I made some slides and I'll throw them on in the video. Stage one, you're an applicant and whatever you see on the bottom is basically what you need to do to get to the next stage. So the first step is basically like a resume screen and there may be a code review or a portfolio review depending on if you're an engineer or if you're a designer. Um, and this is a pretty, I would say relatively straightforward step. Basically the current fellows or previous fellows will scan through your res scan through the resumes and see if you're someone who has the potential to belong in the program. After this, uh, you will become a semifinalist and you will have to basically have an interview with one of the portfolio companies. Um, in, in addition, there's an interest form where you put down which companies you're interested in, which portfolio companies you're interested in. So my advice for this step is definitely do your research and don't be afraid to reach out to those portfolio companies and ask, you know, and the recruiters, right? And ask, hey, you know, I'm a client programs engineering fellow currently applying. Could I learn a little bit more about blank company, right? And I think that's something that will really put you on the radar and will really set you up for success. Now, don't be annoying with it. Definitely respect, you know, the recruiters and whatnot because they're probably busy, but this is just definitely something to get you ahead. Question, there is an interview again. Uh, this interview for the most part is behavioral, although I've heard that there are some technical interviews at this stage, but you know, it's going to vary from person to person because again, it's going to be a KP portfolio company recruiter who's interviewing you on behalf of Kleiner Perkins. I know that's a mouthful that might be a little bit of a scramble, but that's how it works. After the semi-finalist round, you become a finalist. Um, if you made it this stage, congratulations. All you need to do to move to become a fellow is you just need to secure an internship at a Kleiner Perkins portfolio company. I know it's it's kind of crazy, right? You've just went through this entire you know application process, and now you have to essentially apply again to an internship and go through another internship cycle almost. Um, so I know this can be kind of tedious, and that's why I actually will recommend doing a separate timeline. And the timeline is what I call like the backdoor method, and it's as follows. Essentially, in the beginning when you apply to the Kleiner Perkins Fellowship, you also apply to getting an internship at one of the portfolio companies. This way, when you advance from, you know, the semi-finalist round to the finalist round, you will automatically become a fellow. And this is because you already have an internship at that portfolio company. Um, so this is definitely like one of the, I guess, cheekier ways of becoming a fellow. But definitely make sure you're doing your research, make sure you're passionate about the company you're at and that you want to work there. And you know, you, you it's a cultural fit. No tips outside of the timeline and Know, some pointers the first thing i will say is if you have like a track record of success or excellence for example like if you have patents if you've done a startup before etc etc definitely highlight that experience and talk about those awards or whatnot that you've won and then the second thing would be is to leverage that and talk about how you might apply that in the future and your future ambition ambitions your future goals etc again this this video is not saying you're guaranteed to get in it just tips and advice as well as you know information from my experience applying to the fellowship program. So next up, you know, I'm probably done talking. You probably are sick of my voice. I'll bring in two other KP fellows. One is a design fellow who I had the pleasure of working with. And to the part two continuation of the video, we're gonna you know, do a little interview with the design fellow. This is uh, one of my dearest friends, Elliot Chang. Uh, he was the winner of the Adobe, number one winner of the Adobe design competition. 
there's something like 40, 50,000, right? Participants. This guy something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he also played at Coachella too. That's another, another thing that he did. Um, so yeah, with, with that, uh, Elliot, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background and uh, which fellowship you ended up doing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So a little bit of my background, I majored in behavioral economics and mathematics and dabbled a little bit with computer science. Uh, boys had an interest in design. Uh, so on the side with schoolwork, I uh, picked up a little bit of design just through side projects with website development, app development, and game development. Um, and then from there, through side projects, I was able to pick up some uh, software eng dash design work um, and eventually trickle my way into, into the KP Fellowship. Yeah, for sure. So I went over a little bit about how the general application process works. Would you want to, you know, touch on maybe what type of questions they like ask design applicants and maybe how the design process or the design fellowship may have a different interview process than uh, the yeah. one that's already covered? Yeah, 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 for sure. So in terms of different material compared to the software and track, uh, they require you to submit a portfolio as well as a design challenge. Uh, so for me, I've applied for two years before this. The first year I did a redesign on Robinhood and the second year I did a redesign on just the Facebook feature. Um, and I think the biggest thing for the redesign is that you need to showcase both your ability to understand the user interface as well as the user experience designs um, and just really conveying that you want to not only design but be an entrepreneur that can create. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Um, and I guess like, how would you, you know, describe your experience as a designer in the, during the fellowship? Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, so I compare the experience to a lot of other internships as well as my own internship experience. And what I found really interesting about the Kleiner fellowship was just the level of autonomy you get uh, on your projects. Like I have friends who are working at fan companies and the scope of their project is literally just one button of one feature within a platform. Whereas uh, the designers within the fellowship, I've seen a lot of people who have full autonomy across an entire platform or have just a much larger scope uh, within and outside of, or within design and outside of design. Gotcha, yeah, that sounds that sounds exciting. Um, uh, do you have any like words of advice for uh, the application in general? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would say that I think I've seen a lot of people who are trying to enter tech in general or specifically trying to get into PM or design. Uh, and what I've seen generally is that the people who are able to get into tech, even without one of those degrees, usually have their own passion projects that showcase their software engineering skills or PM skills or, or design sense. Um, and being able to leverage that passion for those side projects into creating a better application, I think is generally a, a good route to go about the fellowship. Gotcha. Yeah, for sure. That sounds, that sounds great. Um, uh, let's see. And then do you have any advice for like the fellowship? Like, you know, how would you rate the fellowship itself? Um, and then like, you know, if, if you, you're talking to a future fellow, what advice would you give them? Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I would say the biggest thing about the, the fellowship is the community, for sure. Like a lot of the events are cool. Like you can talk to CEOs, you can talk to VCs. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the, the main takeaway, at least for me, was being able to meet like-minded people who are also high achieving, who are the same age that I know will be working in tech for the next 10, 20 years uh, that I'll be working with throughout my life for, for the rest of my career. Before we uh, end off here, uh, Elliot, do you have like, you know, if people have questions or if people want advice, you know, are you open to that? And if so, where can they find you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free to reach out. Uh, I've been getting a couple of DMs in my my LinkedIn recently as the fellowship application process is closing. Uh, but I know the design recruiting season really starts up in January. Um, so if people feel like pretty lost with product design or just tech in general, feel free to, to reach out. Um, I'll see if we can set up some time to talk. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Elliot also does portfolio reviews. So if you're a designer, definitely hit him up. Links are gonna be in the description. And one is another engineering fellow who I also had the pleasure of working with. I'm here with Javi Doshi. Uh, she's part of the Berkeley M&T program, which is, you know, super elite. And she's one of the big shots there. Uh, so Javi, you know, do you have any advice for this year's applicants? Yeah. So KP really does focus on the entrepreneurship side rather than just your coding as it would in any other normal software position that you apply for. And so it's really important that in your application when you write your essay and also when you have your next rounds in your interviews 
that you really highlight that part of you that knows how to take initiative and do things outside of just what has been told and required for you to do, but rather everything that you do just out of your own will and like your knowledge of the startup space, if you have any, and even if you don't, it's okay as long as you show that you have somewhat of that spirit that differentiates you from just a regular software engineer. Yeah, that's some really good advice, Jambi. Um, very eloquently put, do you have any, uh, like, you know, give us a review of this year's program and, you know, if you have any advice for people who are going to be part of next year's program. Yeah, so even though this year was remote, everyone was still, or a good amount of people were still able to connect with each other and choose to connect with each other outside on their own will, even in person. And I think that goes to show kind of what, how the entire vibe, as you could say, of the, all the fellows are in the way that, as I kind of mentioned before, that you want to show how much of an initiative taker you are, because that is kind of the backbone of being an entrepreneur. And so because everyone has that, it creates this very social and welcoming, comfortable atmosphere where everyone wants to go out and meet people and make new friends and make these connections. And so it creates this actual fellowship where you can find and make friends that you know you would be in touch with outside of just that one summer. And for any advice I would have, I would have to just, even if this next year is remote, to still make an effort to reach out to people because the one thing that you, and the one way you can learn the most is through people and through their stories and just by being with them. And last but not least, if this video helped you out in any way, please smash the like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and hopefully, you know, it will encourage me to make more videos about startups and entrepreneurship, which I really hope to help provide, you know, that niche aspect into, into Silicon Valley uh, on, on my channel.